Aloha. I'm creating a video for those receiving leucosperamum cuttings. Uh, if you don't have a process put together for, for processing the cuttings, for rooting, uh, I'm going to show you my method for doing it here at CTARS Komahana Research Extension Center. Just a disclaimer, this is just my method. Um, it's based off of my anecdotal trialing um, and not necessarily off of full-on research projects looking at success rates. But I've had good success with, with the methods that I'm going to talk about today. So you're going to receive your cuttings. They're going to look a little bit uh, like the picture on the left. I'm looking at the cuttings that I got here, and they're about the same size, about a foot in length. If they're straight cuttings, you can cut them into about four inch uh, sections, like the image on the right. So I took that cutting and cut it uh, into three sections. I like four inches. You can go a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, depending on what you're looking for. Um, if you want to get more out of it, you can go shorter. But I I like around about four inches. Now, if you've got branched stems, like the one you're looking at here, you can process it in a similar way that I'm showing. So I will turn each of the branched sections into uh, their own cuttings, take the bottom and, and turn it into a cutting itself. You can see that this is about six inches to seven inches. So I'll cut this back a little bit. Uh, I'll prune off the bottom here and use a top four to five inch section. And then I discard the branched area although you can attempt to root it you can attempt to root any of any of the material but i like nice clean uh, stems to create good plants to start so i've got all my stems uh, uh cut into the proper cutting length you can see they're going to be piled up there so i start by cutting all the stems into their proper lengths and then you'll want to remove the leaves from the bottom portion of the cutting that is going to go into the rooting medium. I do that by holding uh, the tip of the cutting with my thumb and forefinger, holding the stem with my other thumb and forefinger, and pulling down. You can kind of see that action here. So holding it here, pulling down with your thumb and forefinger here. And the leaves do come off pretty readily, especially on a little bit of the younger tissue. You might have a rip here or there, but... Uh, it's the most efficient way to get the job done quickly, which if you have a lot of cuttings, you're going to want to figure that out. I use a, a rooting mixture of 60% or three parts potting media. I use ProMix in this situation. You can also use something like Sunshine some, Number 4, anything that is essentially a peat moss based with perlite in it already. I mix that potting media with two parts or 40% uh, perlite, fine grade perlite. So you can see here, there's quite a bit of perlite in there. You want that aeration uh, to be fairly high in your rooting media. So again, that's three parts potting soil to two parts uh, fine grade perlite. You can also use medium grade if you have it um, and can't find the fine grade or a combination of the two. Again, the, the potting soil is something like uh, Pro Mix or Sunshine Number 4. I stick my cuttings into 72 cell trays, 72 count cell trays. They're about two inches deep. Um, I would like a little bit deeper, but this is the most efficient use of space that I have for preparing the cuttings, and, and I like it that way. I used a two times diluted 1% um, IBA mixture uh, for, for this. So it's a 0.5% uh, IBA mixture that you're looking at there. And you can see the image on the right is what the cuttings will look like when stuck into the media. And I'll do that for, for every single cutting. And then we'll talk about my rooting environment. Because I am rooting the plants at Komohana Research Extension Center at about 280 foot elevation, it's a little bit hotter, so I prefer to root them under shade. This is 50% shade, and there's a little bit extra shade from 
the very old plastic uh, roofing material for this greenhouse. So I'm probably looking at closer to 60 or 70% shade total for the cuttings. If you're higher elevation, um, you may not need any, any shade, but here in Hilo, I do prefer having a little bit of shade to reduce the, the temperature and reduce the solar radiation. This is what my rooting environment looks like, my propagation environment. I chose this because it's easy to put up and take back down, and then I can use the bench space for later. Uh, probably most important to consider is what sort of, of misters you're going to get. I prefer these Netafim misters. So it's Netafim micro sprinkler fogger hanging assembly uh, with a tube length of, of 12 inches. Um, it's got four misters on each side. They're anti-clog. A weight will hold down the misters. Um, and you can see how I attach it to the half-inch poly tube here. I really like these misters. They're the best misters um, that I've used lately. But this is not necessarily recommending just that product. It's what I've been using. You also are gonna want a timer that lets you mist at least as low as every 15 minutes uh, in frequency. I bought a very cheap timer because it's attached to a hose that I'm able to take on and off, again, for being able to use this location and this space for other purposes later. You can also do inline uh, irrigation timers, but there's very cheap timers out there. Just make sure that it allows you to have a misting frequency of down to 15 or 10 minutes, and your runtime should be able to come down to only uh, uh, a few seconds. So that being said, my misting schedule currently is uh, all day, every day, uh, every 15 minutes for 10 seconds. So every 15 minutes, uh, the mister comes on, the mist timer comes on, and it runs for 10 seconds. And I have that set up because this mist timer does not allow me to turn off the mist during evenings. If you have the ability to turn off mist after sunset, an hour after sunset, an hour, and turn it on an hour before sunrise, you can do that. It will probably help with um, fungal pathogen. Uh, infections. For my situation, though, I, I can't do that. So again, a mist timer that allows you to have a frequency down to 10 to 15 minutes and run times down to about 10 seconds. I missed a frequency of every 15 minutes all day for a runtime of 10 seconds. And I've had these cuttings rooting for a few months now and they're already showing uh, roots. So you can see all are still pretty much alive. I've got about 99% success rate on this right now, 1% mortality, just from bad cuttings. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you can contact me at rgalanti at hawaii.edu. Um, that's R-G-A-L-A-N-T-I at hawaii.edu, or you can email me um, along with Ken Lenhardt. Thank you and aloha.